Hello Creative! It's your Graphics Girl of GraphicsGirl.com. That's graphics with PH and S. Girl with no I and three R's. And I'm here to help you design your brand. But first, how would you like a free cheat sheet? I thought so. Head over to GraphicsGirl.com to get your free Illustrator cheat sheet that will show you all the shortcuts in the program. Just click the link below. You can have a lot of fun with color in Illustrator. If you come to your toolbar located on the left hand side, whether your toolbar has two columns or one like mine, you'll see that at the bottom of the toolbar, there's a fill and a stroke. The fill, as you might imagine, is the inside color of an object. And if you hit X on your keyboard, it will toggle the stroke or border of your object. So again, that's X on your keyboard to toggle between the white and the black. If you're not seeing white and black over here, then click the small default settings right here, the small one. When you click that, it will change it. So if I had a different fill and a different stroke on my colors at the bottom of my toolbar, and then I hit the small default, it will put it back to white fill black stroke. Lastly, the small arrow to the right swaps these two. So if you click on that, you now have a black fill white stroke. Okay, so with that, imagine now we're gonna create a shape that has no stroke or border. You would hit X on your keyboard, and then right below it, you can choose none. So no stroke, and currently a black fill. Now, if I take my shape tool at the top and I just click and draw out a rectangle, it will be a black rectangle. With it still selected now, you can see that I'm still on the shape tool. If I come up here to my selection tool, the black arrow at the top of the toolbar, you can see that I have it selected such that I could move it if I wanted to. So with it selected, you could come to your swatches panel. You show your swatches by coming to Window, Swatches. So when you show your swatches, it most likely will appear somewhere over here on the right hand side. For convenience, just for this tutorial, I've placed my swatches over here. You'll see why. With my object selected, if I come to my swatches, I can change the color to be anything that you see here. If you're in a file that doesn't already have swatches, I'm going to show you how you can create your own colors and save them to your swatches panel. So if you have your objects selected now again with your selection tool at the top of your toolbar, you can see in addition to at the bottom of your toolbar, the fill color now has the color that you've selected from your swatches, but also at the top in the options menu, you can see you have a fill, and no stroke. All of the attributes of the object that you have selected show up at the top of your screen. So next, let's move on to how you can create your own color. So if you come to the bottom of your toolbar and double click that fill color, it brings up for you the color picker dialog box. And from here, you can see that you could enter numbers for the RGB or CMYK, which stands for cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. The reason why they don't use B for black is because it was already taken by blue. In addition to that, you'll also see the hexadecimal or six character placement that's used for web design. If you have this only web colors unchecked, then you can see the whole gamut. In fact, you can take the scroll here and go through the entire color spectrum. If you've ever played around in Photoshop, this might look familiar to you. So after you choose a color from the spectrum, you can see its values of red, green, and blue here. When you click OK, you can see that it puts your color at the bottom in your fill. Once it's there, you could choose to add it to your swatches by clicking on the color and dragging it into your swatches panel. 
Notice that the color panel also has the same color. So similarly, if you were to move your values here in the color panel, once you have your color, you could select and drop it into your swatches panel. Once you have your color, you just click and drag it into the swatches panel. Once it's in your swatches panel, if you have an object selected, you just click on the color and it will apply it. So the last way to apply color to an object you have selected is to look in your options menu at the top. Because your object is selected, the colors that you see there are identical to your swatches panel. So in the same vein, you could click down and choose your colors here. This is for the fill. If you wanted a stroke color now, you'd click the drop down and choose it. Here, it's very subtle, but if I take my magnification tool at the bottom, if I zoom in, you can see that it applied a very small red stroke. I could increase the value of my stroke to its immediate right. So I'm just going to select it with my selection tool and then remove the stroke from the object and then hit X on the keyboard to bring the fill color to the forefront. We know that we can select colors here from the options menu at the top of the color panel. We know we can do RGB, CMYK, as well as grayscale. But maybe you're not great at coordinating color and you don't know which colors to choose and put together. Well, Illustrator's got you covered because if you come to Window, Swatch Libraries, Illustrator has a ton of color coordinated books already for you. So you could choose colors of food, such as fruit. When I select that, you'll see it opens a panel that's just for fruit colors. So if you're looking for that perfect plum shade, now you don't need to know the red, green, blue equivalent of that, or try to find that in the color spectrum. All you need to do is load in your swatches and select a color. So when you come to Windows Swatch Libraries, you can see that they have metallics, neutrals, even art history. If you wanted colors from the Baroque period, you could select that. And there, it has an entire panel of colors that are consistent and coordinated with this time period. So you could choose to dock all of your color books in one tab. So you could choose any one of these colors. But one of the most useful books in Illustrator is the Pantone Matching System. You get to the PMS or Pantone Matching System by coming to Swatch Libraries, Color Books. Pantones are spot colors that can be mixed on press to take up one plate. And it's kind of like having paint chips when you're trying to choose the wall color. If you load in, let's say, the Pantone Solid Coated book, and you're looking at this on bright white paper, it is a go-by that we can all agree to that it could be this particular shade of green that we want to have in our design. So you can see in your color panel now that that particular shade of green is PMS or Pantone 354. The C just indicates that it's for coded stock, such as covers of a book. When you came to your swatch libraries and showed your color books, Pantone also has solid uncoded books as well. Let's say if you wanted colors for a natural feel on your packaging where it's more matte than varnished. So all of these panels are resizable and all of these panels are dockable. Be sure that you know if your project is going to have a coating or not, or if you're trying to search for something in particular, you could show that Pantone book, such as pastels or metallics. If you already know your PMS color, such as Coca-Cola red, you could punch that value in. I'll just make up a number, 369. So if I knew I wanted this green, as opposed to my last green, I would select that. You may or may not know the number, but in general, you should have a Pantone fan book. I highly recommend purchasing a Pantone fan book to look at that color as it's printed on bright white paper. You can get one on my resources page on Amazon for 50 bucks. If you go to Pantone.com, you could spend up to $1,500 for an entire set. 
So you can see here as I've had my object selected and I was choosing different PMS colors. If you take a look in your swatches panel, you can see that it added these swatches automatically. PMS colors are noted with a triangle in the lower right hand corner, different from the other solid colors comprised of four color process. So that's how you can load in all kinds of color in Illustrator. If you found this video helpful, give it a like, share it with your friends, and please subscribe to my channel. And don't forget, for free marketing, branding, and design resources, head over to graphicsgirl.com. That's graphics with PH and S, girl with no I and three R's. And I'm here to help you design your brand.